assistant professor or lecturer, you can say, BRD Medical College, Gorakhpur, Uttar Pradesh. Former, why? Because uh, they have terminated me from my job last month, just one month before the UP election. Today uh, is the 11th state and I'm happy to be in Goa to in front of you to launch this book, The Gorakhpur Hospital Tragedy. This book is about, uh, not only about my life, it gives, gives you seven crucial answers which everybody asked those days on 10th of August 2017 when suddenly liquid oxygen supply was disconnected or stopped at a BRD Medical College Gorakhpur which is a 950 bedded multi-specialty hospital. Gorakhpur is situated in UP Uttar Pradesh that is the eastern part of India and it's a very small town but it's now famous because of our uh, like two things uh, this uh, incident the Gorakhpur hospital tragedy and uh, because of our chief minister Yogi Adityanath Ji Maharaj the liquid oxygen supply was stopped because government didn't pay 68 lakh rupees to the supplier who was asking for his dues for the past for five months and he has written 14 letters to the authorities to give my money but they wanted 10% commission 10% uh, you can ask you know bribe to clear the due he couldn't pay those 6 to 8 lakh rupees and 63 kids and 18 adults died in those 54 hours those kids were belonging to poor socio-economic status that will be, you know the poor marginalized society that's why nothing happened there was a uproar all over India all over the world people were worried why those kids died but nothing happened the real culprits of BRD Medical College are still roaming free. But in April, May 2021, when the whole India, especially the metros, Delhi, Mumbai, even Goa also, Goa Medical College, there was an interruption of oxygen here also, and so many deaths were happened. But uh, government initially they recognized there was a uh, shortage of oxygen, but they and deaths were happened. But uh, in the court they denied it. So when this tsunami happened, when the metros, Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, Kolkata, Lucknow, Kanpur, when those elite class, which they think that health is a commodity, they can get best treatment whenever they want by just throwing money, they also have to suffer, they also have to struggle to find a bed, to find medicines to get oxygen. They also died. That was one trigger. I, I felt like a, it was like an acute deja vu situation for me. What I have witnessed in those 54 hours in BRD Medical College, the whole India witnessed the same thing. So I was talking about, I answered seven crucial questions. People ask, first is about those 63 families and 18 adults who died and 81 families who are still waiting for the justice. The story is about this, those families. The corruption in health system, the power, the political power which thinks that those people who belong to poor marginalized community or they don't really matter at all. And 75% of Indians are still living that life, you can say. The pillar of democracy, judiciary is how it becomes slow. Like it took 
them nine months to realize that I was the junior most doctor there. The life in prison, how it is, I have given, a, I have almost given seven to eight chapter in that. And then the most important in the, that I believe that it's not because of COVID-19 our health system has collapsed. COVID-19 has just exposed already collapsed health system. I'm proud to say that uh, we have sold almost 10,000 copies in two months. Uh, they say if you sell 1,000 copies, that's a uh, good book. So we have sold 10,000 copies and we have, I have, uh, uh, we launched 17th of December, thank you, 17th of December 2021 in Delhi. And this is the 11th state I am launching this. Now come to the real story. I was the junior most doctor there. I joined BID Medical College on 8th of August 2016. I've done my MBBS MD from Manipal only and I used to come to Goa frequently in those days. So I joined BID Medical College on 8th of August 2016 and this incident happened on 10th of August 2017. When I was the junior most doctor there, I got a WhatsApp message in the night stating in, in our WhatsApp group stating there is no oxygen in the hospital, liquid oxygen supply is stopped and uh, whatever jumbo cylinder, 52 jumbo cylinders were there, that is also vanished. So kids are dying. That's the message was saying and I just ran. Liquid oxygen supply was stopped at 7.30 p.m. on 10th of August 2017 and can be restored only on 13th of August 2 a.m. So there was no oxygen for 54 hours. There were 400 kids admitted that time and more than 1000 adults. We tried to save those kids. We got uh, oxygen cylinders from nearby hospital and when with the local suppliers and when that, uh, that was not enough, we went to Seema Suraksha Bal, uh, that is a paramilitary force. They gave uh, soldiers, they gave trucks, so it was a very horrible situation because even though we were trying to save those kids, every half an hour, one hour, one kid was dying. We couldn't save 63 lives and at the same time 18 adults also died. I have given six chapters to those 54 hours. I tried to put it like, try to write it like that you will feel that you are trying to save those kids. Then on 13th of August, uh, our Prime Minister Narin Modi ji has sent a delegate, a team from Delhi under the then ex, the then health minister J.P. Nadda sir, union health minister, with a team of doctors from Delhi to find out the reason why that incident happened. There was a rumor that, uh, you know, the BJP itself inside, they were fighting to remove uh, Yogi and they got the chance. And that's why the central team was sent. Just before that, on 12th of August, Health Minister of Uttar Pradesh has given the statement that August mein mote hoti hain. In 2016, 18.5 kids died. In 2017, 20.5 kids died. So why there is so much uproar? So he calculated and made it like a numbers to those kids who died. Now when the health minister arrived in Lucknow, Yogi ji said that no, you are not going alone, I am coming with you. And he came on 13th of August with him 
to Gorakhpur Medical College. There was so much uproar all over India and I remember the medical college became like a people life movie. We have seen so many reporters, international and national everywhere. Washington Post, New York Times, in the name you give, everybody was there. So 13th August when the chief minister came, he didn't let J.P. Nadda speak a single word. And when I was called by Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath, I was, I thought I will get, get a pat on my back. I will just, I will just uh, read the paras for you. Unsuspecting of what was to come, I entered the cubicle where the VIP stood and greeted everyone. I had imagined that I would receive a pat on the back, but instead I was met with pin drop silence. Everyone, he, simply stared at me. The chief minister stared at me, ignoring my greeting. He was fuming. His face was flushed and he was angry. So you are Dr. Kafil. Hai. So you are Dr. Kafil. In tu and aap there is a big difference. Okay. So the moment he said tu Dr. Kafil, hai, I, I, I realized that something is wrong. I am not going to get a, you know, Back on my back, something is wrong in that room. So you think that you arranged the cylinder? I said, yes. Yes, sir. I acknowledged. I was disturbed by the way he was addressing me with the pronoun to, indicating disrespect. I could tell something was not right. The CM then turned to a consultant and asked, how many cylinders did he save with these four or five cylinders? No one answered his question inside my head. A voice was screaming, not four or five, we arranged 500 cylinders in 54 hours. But it died, did not say anything. So you think by getting So you think by getting cylinders, you are going to become some kind of hero. I will see. Those four words changed my life forever. For the past five years, I have been imprisoned for more than 500 days, more than four times, I was went, I was sent behind the bar every time with some allegations. And luckily I, every time court came in my favor and you know, even High Court and Supreme Court, they called everything illegal, whatever Yogi government has given. But those uh, 500 days, nobody was going to give me back. Anyhow, when that yogi ji said those four words to me, that was a signal to J.P. Nadda sir that this is my Gorakhpur. And to those some selected media people who were inside that room that day, that time, there was a signal that this is their scapegoat. Now the whole media started like for two days, they made me hero, Farishta, Masiya. And the same media, they started stories. Murderer, Katil, Hatyara. So the, initially, the government tried to bury the whole incident. When they could not, they came up with the false narrative. In that medical college, there are 500 doctors and 5,000, more than 5,000 employees. But the media, the electronic media, the big media houses who were sitting in Delhi and Mumbai, they started making false stories. I have given few pictures also. This is a tank, which is 150 feet tall tank which can have, you know, 1.5 lakh liters of liquid oxygen. The tank was empty for 54 hours. And Aapki Adalat Ke Rajat Sharma, if you know, he ran a story at 9 o'clock prime time that I was stealing this tank and taking to my cleaner and coming back every day. And people believed that. People believed that story. Times now, Anno Goswami, sir, 
nine o'clock he ran a episode on this BRD hospital uh, tragedy and called me vice principal. Sattar bachcho ka katil vice principal Dr. Kafil Khan. They made me vice principal. You have to be 40 year old. You have to have 10 years of experience to become vice principal of any medical college. They made me head of the department. They made me superintendent of the hospital. So everybody was writing anything. They didn't come to Gorakhpur to find out who is Dr. Kafil. When I filed a RTI and asked who was the vice principal that time, the government reply is there is no such post in BRD. So they made me vice principal, they made me superintendent, they made me head of the department, they made they said that I was stealing <coughs> liquid oxygen. Liquid oxygen is if you see, uh, you can see the uh, yellow pipeline which goes to the bed in, in the hospital. Uh, that you know, how can somebody steal that? But nobody thought about that. People were so, now the media, there were so many questions. I was talking to uh, Sir about this. That there were so many questions before the 13th of August. People were asking, how many kids died? Why oxygen was stopped? Who asked for the commission, the bribe? Why the health minister give, has given the insensitive statement of August mein mohte hoti rehti hain? The chief minister who was the MP, member of parliament for 30 years, five times member of parliament, what he did. So those question was there and yes, there was the, the, there was a question that uh, people were saying, yes, Dr. Kafil has saved life. But there was six, seven questions. But after that, meeting with my chief minister and media started spreading misinformation, everybody started talking about Dr. Kafil, Dr. Kafil, Dr. Kafil. Even after five years, they talk about me, they don't talk about those 63 kids and 18 adults who died. Doctor, if you, if you don't mind, uh, yeah. we, we, we'll, we'll get a chance to unveil more of the story through the Q&A as the session goes on. Thank you so much for giving us this important background to help us to understand the context because it's a very complicated story. It's an important story. It's a touching story. We feel your pain. We feel your pain especially when, when, when someone goes out to try to help and then the full uh, thing is slapped on you yourself. Uh, we have been following your case okay, because uh, the collapse of the medical infrastructure is nothing new in India as, as, as you have been saying in our part of the world, not only in India, in our part of the world largely, in the third world, uh, you know, uh, we, we have, as you rightly said, we know about oxygen collapses only because of COVID, otherwise it is something which doesn't touch our lives, it doesn't touch our lives. So, so uh, we have got hints of this story, but now as I was trying to pick up, to pick up uh, the threads, you know, it's, I was understanding how complex it is. There is a Wikipedia page which I don't know whether you agree with it or not because some Wikipedia pages can be quite nasty and uh, they show the, the, the you know, anti-establishment guys as the bad guys always. But here this page gives a fairly good account I felt about, you know, what happened and all that except that they call you the, they call you the head of the department there. Some mistakes, some mistakes may, may still be there. Uh, at this point, uh, just one or two uh, clarifications from you. I noticed that people are still treating you with some degree of skepticism because this is the election season. So the Deccan Herald asked this question, have you brought it up only because of elections? Point number one. And point number two, if you can tell us something about Japanese encephalitis and, and, and you know we heard of it only in the 80s. After that, touch wood, it, it has not afflicted our parts of the country. Just these two questions. Then, then we will throw it open to the audience and uh, more okay. interaction. Uh, the, the first question was that why my book has released in December, uh, just before one month before the election, is it uh, politically uh, motivated? So the answer is uh, Kanishka is here, my literary agent, who 
so i signed the contract with him in april itself uh, and so uh, this was a public no publisher was ready to publish this book in india uh, this is a british publisher pan macmillan they 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 ready without uh, to publish without cuts because even the harper collins and pa other penguin and everybody was just you know saying cut this part cut that part and uh, see even if you uh, talk about this book this book if it is, it is uh, politically motivated this sh book should be in hindi because that's the you know uh, it should be like hindi in our language where up people speak hindi but that book is not in hindi and it's still not published in hindi so people are not asking why yogi government has terminated me before the election uh, people are asking why i have written the book uh, because this book is, and uh, those people who write books they know that it's, it's not easy to write a book in one day it takes years to write uh, uh, i'm writing another book about because this book is only about till 2019 when uh, i got a um, acquittal from the different inquiries and the high court but i have not written anything about the uh, cnrc uh, that and the nsa the national security act was uh, slapped on me and I again went behind the bar for seven but I, i'm writing the another book on that and it's almost uh, one and a half years i'm writing that so so it take time and this is book is, uh, is if you read it there are so many notes you will find which i have written during my 9 months of uh, prison in uh, gorakhpur prison the second question he asked about the japanese encephalitis so one one lie they said that all those kids in that night were died because of japanese encephalitis see this picture see this picture they are they are newborn the newborn babies and see where are they lying they are lying in a single warmer five five babies warmer is a servo comparator like it it, it, it can have only one baby at a one time and that cost only 35000 rupees yogi aditnath was member of parliament for 30 years there in like five time but this is the picture um, i have taken from my phone on the same day new bones see the uh, this is an icu you can if you see all those kids died new bones they don't get in kefalite is japanese kefalite is new bone less than 6 month in kefalite is not diagnosed so more than 6 month only kids can have uh, in kefalite is and all these kids uh, out of 63 70% were new born they born on the same day or one day before so so this is uh, a lie which was told by the chief minister and which was propagated by the media the second thing he asked about why the encephalitis is prevalent in gorakhpur is not only in gorakhpur it's a, it's prevalent in all part of eastern india like eastern uttar pradesh the whole purvanchal what you say then bihar where they call it chamki bimari in west bengal and assam where they call it mastic jor it is the same thing what we got in kerala the nipar nipa virus in kefalitis when so kefalitis is actually killing thousands of kids every year in yes in eastern up i agree with you and is i we have done a research on that and we found out that seven p's are responsible for this in kefalitis first thing is poverty all those kids who died of in kefalitis they belong to poor class the question is the japanese in kefalitis is transmitted by a mosquito and we have a vaccine against that japanese in kefalitis started from japan and it's vanished there from there but still in india the kids are dying and 
we have very good vaccine which will prevent the, uh, which, whoever get two doses they won't get Japanese encephalitis but how a mosquito differentiate between a rich and poor kid why all those kids died of Japanese encephalitis belong to poor social family status it is because those who are responsible for giving vaccination the government officials they don't go to the Dalit Batsis the minorities the ghettos you say, can say to those people, I think. So first is poverty, the second is population, the overcrowding in a, in a sing, single room, so many kids and family, everybody is there. The third thing is poor personal hygiene, not washing your hand before food or after uh, toilet. Lack of safe drinking water, poor water supply. They still uh, drink from the well or, you know, in the rural areas. Poor vaccination drive, what I have called, I told you. Poor nutrition, there is malnourished. All those kids who died, they are malnourished. So, this is a cycle, you know, poverty, poor nutrition, and then your immunity is decreased and you get to wear this. Yeah, of course. Uh I, I, I don't want to uh, reduce this to a medical uh, discussion, but it's a very important political issue also. And I understand, doctor, how difficult it must have been to tell your story, uh, which is a technical story at one level, in a human in a human way also. And I'm sure that Kanishka and all have done a great job of it, because I know Kanishka is a literary agent who got your, your work published. But at this point, you know, maybe we could leave it open to the audience, members of the audience, who, if you would like to ask a question, feel free to. I know there are many things which are left unsaid. We will leave it up to you to uh, fit in the pieces of the jigsaw and to understand where they all connect, because these are complex, complex issues. But uh, they are important issues nonetheless. Yes. The mic will be passed around. If there's anyone who wants to interact with a question, with a comment, please introduce yourself and uh, go ahead. The first question is always the toughest to get because everyone is waiting for someone else to ask. Actually, uh, one question I want to answer you because I have written also. Uh, everybody asks, Yogi, is it not made you a scapegoat because you are a Muslim? The answer is no. Because from my heart, I, I feel even if it's Dr. Kapil Mishra, even if it's Dr. Kapil John, even if it's Dr. Kapil Kumar, a Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Isai, Yogi Ritnath would have done the same thing to save himself. I will just read it for you. When the opposition parties and a few Muslim leaders praised me, it made matter worse, painting the incident in a communal color. It became a hot topic across the country as people began dividing themselves on the basis of religion. When I had gone rushing to get oxygen cylinder that fateful night, I swear to my Allah that I never stopped to wonder which of my patients were Hindu and who among them were Muslim who belonged to which caste and who was poor or rich. So, this is the question everybody asks me and I feel because of uh, these two letters I roam with uh, Yogi Adityanath uh, is still haunting me. This is a letter I have given. This is a letter is written on 6th of April 2017 and written to the Chief Minister and to the Health Minister. 6th of April. The incident happened in August. Five months before that. And similar 14 letters I have, similar, asking for the dues. This letter, <coughs> this letter is written on 9th of August 2017 and handed over personally to the health minister. The, and his letter is written, is saying that the liquid oxygen supply will stop within 24 hours if you don't pay my dues, 68 lakh rupees. But still they didn't pay. So to, uh, I think uh, because, uh, uh, let me tell you, out of like uh, eight people who were suspended from the BRD Medical College after the incident, including the principal of the uh, medical college and to the, uh, the oxygen in charge, supply in charge, Dr. Satish Kumar and accountant who were responsible for the payment, they were suspended and be went behind the bar with me. All have got... Uh, their job back, they are reinstated only except me, even though 
the high court and eight different inquiries have given me clean chit absolve me all the charges of medical negligence and corruption even though i got terminated yeah you can ask the questions yeah please it has to be asked why you me yeah because uh, yeah because the media for two days they made me hero and masiha and yogi was very clever to he wanted to change the narrative he wanted to distract people the moment the name khan came it's easy to sell a story it's easy to sell a story when the name khan came so to he wanted to change this narrative and he got successful in that because two days the media was media made me hero they saw me were working the local uh, uh, media houses and that same story the big media also played so i think uh, i will just give you an example the two jnu students kadiya kumar and umar khalid they say they they alleged that these two went to pakistan to destabilize the government they alleged that but when we talk when we go and talk to people they said no no kanhaiya kumar nahi gaya hoga umar khali zarur gaya hoga so this is the difference times have changed those of us who grew up in the 60s and 70s perhaps no a more secularized and more uh, neutral nation anyway but uh, maybe i could ask kanishka to share with us a little bit about his experience in uh, in getting this book through to the publishers and uh, the difficulties because we hear of book censorship nowadays also so uh, if your if your book is seen as very anti government it would probably get a bit more of a tougher time to get published kanishka can i yeah savya kanishka in the red shirt straight in front so like before uh, finding a publisher we had to put the book together so initially i think that was more challenging because uh, dr khan reached out to me last year early 2021 2020 and uh, at that time he wanted to tell the story in a different format he wanted to tell it in a diary format uh, and uh, i felt that uh, it had to be a proper narrative so the first time i met dr khan was in um, delhi we had a meeting it was uh, during covid only and uh, so we had to identify the right writer for the book so that process took a long time and after finding the writer um, the coordination between the writer and dr khan i mean because because both were in different cities thankfully that process went smoothly um, and uh, we managed to prepare a pitch note and sample chapters <coughs> and the book was pitched to publishers uh, so before dr khan reached out to me he was uh, in touch with publishers directly so there was always interest in the book and uh, uh, thankfully we reached out to publishers with a ready manuscript so so most of them knew uh, 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 what the book was about before they took it on and i did not find any uh, major issues finding a publisher but we faced issues uh, during the legal read uh, so that that was the process it was not that difficult interesting interesting anyone else who would like to interact or even a comment if not a question yeah please the lady um so i'm curious about your experience in jail how did you feel that's one and two what is it that you brought to the book was it anger was it you know seeking some kind of justice what what is it that drove you on uh first question about the jail the prison life is horrible uh, i've written a prison uh, about my prison life uh, almost 6 to 7 chapters uh, in in prison it's uh, it's uh, one thing is overcrowded uh, up prisons and uh, where i was lodged in uh, mathur uh, gorakhpur jail the barrack uh, was uh, supposed to have 60 prisoners but we were 180 and around uh, like sometimes 200 and there was only one toilet you know um, so single toilet and uh, 200 people and some people think that you know uh, 
that they are sitting in train they don't use water uh, so it was very difficult and and then uh, it was very suffocating at the same time the nearby barrack uh, one ex uh, minister was staying he was convicted for a murder charge uh, and he was staying alone with tv and uh, you know cooler bag um, single toilet with four people you know serving so the, in jail the corruption is so much that i have i have, I have given the uh, uh, details about that but nobody uh, physically touched me that time uh, you know i was uh, like uh, all the prisoners even the jailer and everybody was uh, nice to me i will just read it for you uh, the red chart i have put <coughs> doctors were not left out of the earning mach machinery the jail doctor received commission based on how they certified healthy and resourceful prisoners at the time of admission as well as from the sales of drugs such as clonazepam alprax dizepam tramadol cough syrups so doctor if you if you have 10000 20000 rupees doctor will certify you are not well and you can stay in the hospital you don't want to work actually you have to work in the prison like my work was to clean toilet every day so if you don't want to work you have to pay 200 rupees per day you you want to meet your family or friend pay the mulakat fee of 50 rupees home sick pay 50 for a call or you can have a mobile phone if you pay more want to have a smoke uh, 150 for a packet of uh, caftan 200 rupees for a gold flag and charas and ganja and marijuana is uh, like uh, is it uh, it you support like it used to come in a big big sack and everybody used to smoke in front of the cops itself so but uh, this time when they pick me up from mumbai uh, after the ca nrc from mumbai to aligarh they took 3 days to reach and uh, and this time the special task force uh, took me i uh, alleging that i have given a inflammatory speech in the aligarh muslim university against the ca and nrc uh, the draconian law which was uh, supposed to come so they used to make me naked they used to remove all the clothes and one person used to hold my leg one person used to hold my hands and they used to beat me with the belt and sticks and they used to continuously beat me uh, i i i don't remember how long they used to beat me because i used to fell unconscious when i used to get up i would find myself in a jeep or in a car uh, my hands were tied up my eyes were closed um, they used to take me different different uh, isolated buildings every day and they were not in uniform tum log saale tumhare khoon mein hi hai tum tum saale pakistan ke liye chale jaate you why you are you are a doctor and still you are talking uh, you know against the government uh, the ca nrc why you are talking they they got uh, all uh, some papers that we have a proof that you went to japan to destabilize the government i said my passport is under judicial custody how can i go to japan and why you are saying japan say pakistan then we have a proof that you have uh, invented some powder which can kill millions of people for 3 days they were like my whole skin back buttock legs it was so raw that it was so painful that i couldn't uh, sleep you know i couldn't sit i couldn't uh, i used to sleep on my abdomen prone position but that didn't uh, break me that i tell you i did that didn't break me i used to cry i used to scream but they didn't break me but hunger did hunger did 
for three days when I didn't get food and water, the moment I reach Mathura Jail, I still remember it was 2nd of February and 29th I had last meal. So I was so desperate that I forgotten about CA, NRC, doctor and everything I forgotten. I, I, I just wanted food. So I, I held a jailer's leg and cried and begged and I said, sir, please give me food, sir, please give me water. And I cried, I literally cried. Or he didn't listen to me and he said that until unless you stop talking about BRD hospital tragedy, stop talking about uh, criticizing the government policies, we won't give you food. And that this time they kept me in a solitary confinement. Uh, you have in prison, you have a solitary cell. And they forgot after putting me inside. I was so hungry, I was so desperate and, and they forgot that nobody came for two, three days. Until the court, my brother, they, they went to court and I left to die. I used to scream, I used to held the, the, the rod of the prison and I used to scream, Koi hai, koi hai, do roti de do. Just give two breads, one glass of water, Achha, ek, 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 ek batak, uh, bucket de do. Ek, ek, uh, I used to scream, 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 I used to, you know, fell off, get up, then again there is a darkness, and again I used to scream. I chew my uh, shirt, I was so hungry. I used to uh, eat grass outside the prison, uh, the grass. When I used to go for urine, uh, because I didn't have water, and I know I'm a doctor, I, I like, uh, for uh, You know, if you don't get water for three to five days, the, the kidney can be, you know, can have failure, renal failure. I, I used to see food in the air. Chicken, mutton, burger, pizza, pastry, cakes. And I, and I literally used to run to get that and eat. So this time it was horrible. If, 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 if it wasn't so tragic, I mean, it would almost be funny, but I mean, I can understand what you're saying, Doctor, and you know, it's so important that these stories are told and that they are kept so that uh, we, we somehow remember all these things, though, of course, you're paying the price for it personally at this point. Uh, also, the other second question that yeah, came up. Uh, second question, she asked me, uh, what was the motive behind this? The trigger was one, one trigger is, was the, the corona uh, second wave tsunami. And I told you, everybody talked about Dr. Kafi, even after five years, nobody talked about those uh, 80 families who lost their uh, kids in front of them. Uh, so I, I, I wrote about those 80 families also. Some of the parents, I talked to them and I, I thought that their story also, their part also should come to the uh, world. So, But, but of course, uh, if I got it right, your name, Kafi, also means witness. So, in a sense, you are bearing witness to to this rubbish that's going on across <coughs> across the land and in in many different ways, uh, which many people are speaking out against, and it's also turning unacceptable. Uh, having said that, we will we will uh, maybe wind up here because it's it's such a you know outpouring of grief and pain that we can only imagine it. I don't think we could ever feel or even uh, you know kind of uh, understand the kind of issues that are documented here. In, in a way, you know, in the upper middle class or in the middle class, we have been away from all these concerns, but COVID has taught us a lesson how, <coughs> what happens when there is no oxygen. And this is precisely the point that Dr. Kafil is making. Uh, his book is available here for sale. Uh, you will get autographed copies today. Uh, I hope we, we keep these stories with us. I don't think we can ever forget them. We will keep these stories and... and uh, yes, please read it because uh, I have uh, written it with my heart. Uh, uh, and it is the truth, nothing else. It's all truth with evidence and everything. Uh, there was a team of lawyers, they, uh, they checked it. And, uh, you know, uh, I tried to make it like, you know, like a novel, not a boring uh, documents. 
uh, if you have read uh, Dan Brown, Da Vinci Code, I thought like uh, I would put it like that, that you are trying to save kids, you are facing the CM wrath and you are in the prison. In uh, five years uh, of 500 days of incarceration, uh, you must be knowing my brother was shot near the chief minister residence and the UP police didn't allow the surgery to remove the bullets, you know, uh, which was essential. And my brother was bleeding and he was crying in pain and they, the cops, they took uh, my brother for a ride for four hours and they didn't do, allow the emergency surgery. They delayed the surgery deliberately. My mother, who is now 70, she had to run from, you know, when lockdown was there, uh, Corona second wave, she has to go to the Aligarh, to the Halabad High Court, to the Supreme Court. My wife has to go to the police station to courts to everywhere. So the whole family has suffered. But what is the most painful part is, when I was doing pediatrics, I was told by my teacher, you will learn the milestone, that is when your child will start running, when the child will start walking, when the child will start, you know, um, climbing, when you will become a father. But when my kid was 11 months old, I was taken away, and when I came back, she was 2 years old. I still remember 29th of April, when she, morning she got up, I got up with her screaming only. She was crying uh, to see somebody else sleeping in our room. Yeah, this. And, and when my eight month old was, uh, this, uh, my child was there, this time, I was again went behind the bar. So when I came back, he was uh, one and a half years. He didn't recognize me. So the most painful part was that, that I was taken away from my kids itself. Yeah, you wanted to say that. Yes, father. Yeah, please. Good evening, everybody. I'm yes. Caesar Atisha. First of all, let me say that Dr. Kafil addresses me as father. I always tell them that I'm a father of three kids. And if you all have heard about IPS Sanjeev but yes, we were involved with them. And I'm proud to say today, I thank Jesus. I thank Allah also, because I prayed for you through Allah that you were not assassinated and you were obedient to me not come to Goa at that time when you were invited. Of course, there's a Gauri Lankesh, Father Bismarck, IPS Sanjeev Bhatt and Dr. Kafil Khan link there. We pray and we hope nothing will go wrong. And uh, you already spoke what I wanted to ask you about your brother. You know that when you were picked up from, you were supposed to be picked up in Goa. But since you didn't come to Goa, you got picked up in Mumbai. Mumbai. And then you had to face all that. And because your brother survived, we were awake, my wife and myself, all night, those three days, praying for you. And your mother especially, how strong she was. We had a, a, this thing to see everything live. So I think that what you saved your brother was the thing that affected Aditya Nath. And if you don't know, we have, out of the 34 scientists in ISRO, 32 failed, thanks to Aditya Nath. He will carry that burden always and I pray and I hope that he gets defeated this time and uh, also uh, he's aware of uh, <coughs> uh, uh, saying uh, Advocate Carlos, if he gets elected into a majority, we will be taking up this issue of yours, it will not be an end. So you pray for us, Thank you. we take care and a uh, little more if you can brief people about what actually happened that night with your brother and how you manage. You gave a brief, but give a little more, you can throw a little more light on that. Okay, thank you. Someone else also wanted to ask the question. If we have a couple of questions, we can take those and wind them up after. Or if there's no one else, uh, yeah, I... you, you would like to? Please, here. Savia. So much, uh, Kapil, for this uh, very pain. Of course, we've been through the entire thing. Yes. We had this team led by Indra Jaising. We, Indra Jaising, and we worked together. And uh, I mean, the first copy of your book reached us. Yes. So we were very happy with that. 
uh, I, of course, what you have said, I'm not going to repeat, but just two things. One is full support and solidarity. Thank you. Thank you. I think what he said, uh, we fully support you on uh, this. I mean, we are also part of the Sanjeev Bhatt uh, thing, uh, you know, the uh, what uh, the children are going through and what he's going through and, of course, all the other cases. And uh, apart from wishing you all the best and assuring you of our support, is what do you plan to do now? You know, with all, with all this, what are your your plans in terms of work and your aspirations and dreams? <laughs> that's also very important. Uh, that's a that's a question I wanted to answer. Uh, but before I answer you, I I'll answer father's uh, uh, answer uh, question. Um, I'll just read it for you. Uh, my brother Kashif had been shot just 500 away from the Goraknath temple. I uh, a uh, very high secure area where the chief minister was staying that night. The next uh, few minutes passed in blur. At early stand I drove with Adil Bhai to a star hospital where some people had taken uh, Kashif. He was uh, alive but screaming in pain. There was two bullets hole in his neck, one on his right elbow and three on his chest. A bullet had pierced uh, through one side of his chest to the other. Um, this, uh, the inspector from Kotwali had come back and now returned with a circle officer. There was the, the, this was the same man to whom the special task force had handed over me in the guest house uh, before my uh, arrest. We had, taken, we had to take your brother to the district hospital. This is very high profile medical legal case. That's what I said. But let us remove the bullets from, in, from his neck. Uh, they were just going to operate, I requested. No, he, uh, he got shot near the Gorkna temple and the CM is at the temple tonight. This is a major security breach. We have to follow our, our protocol. My brother was bleeding profusely. His vital was dipping. I knew as a doctor that he could die any time. I told the circular officer, I'm not going to take, the, take my brother to the medical college because I knew that there is no neurosurgeon and Dr. Ranvijay Dubey, who was neurosurgeon, my, and I knew him, he, he was with me that time. When we reached Star Hospital, where about 25 policemen from different police stations were waiting for us, the superintendent of police also came. He said that my brother could be treated only in a government hospital. I resisted, after which they took my brother in a ambulance and this just you know took us to the medical college and medical college was 10 to 12 kilometer far from that star hospital it was a roller coaster ride to biadi middle college as the road was bad in the state so when we reached there the doctors there said that we don't have a neurosurgeon that's what i was telling to the medical officer and the surgeon will only be available in the morning right now we can't do anything there was no need for our second medical legal examination as the necessary formalities had been already carried out to this the superintendent said then they refer him to Lucknow so Gorakhpur to Lucknow is 300 km no sir if we do that we will lose the patient he is not in position to go to Lucknow at this hour with a bullet stuck in, in his neck when I heard him repeating what I already knew and had told the police, somehow I mastered the courage to start shouting and arguing with the cop. If he won't allow us to go, I am going to start a sit on dharna, I told him. The circle officer came running to the superintendent saying, sir, you have a call because uh, what I did while well, going to the medical college, I started a live uh, Facebook is from inside the prison and when the, this news came broke to the Delhi and every all over uh, so many people started uh, writing and uh, talking about that uh, luckily uh, they changed the attitude and suddenly got the call and he said that you can take your brother to any hospital you want now the uh, question ma'am I asked yes uh, I have started one doctors on road initiative and we go to rural areas and we treat uh, kids uh, free of cost, we treat, give them medication, we give them 
advice we treat them and we go to any uh, part of the country wherever there is a natural calamity whether it's uh, bihar chamki bimari or assam flood or west bengal tufan and we i am i'm proud to say that uh, like uh, with our team uh, during covid second wave when uh, the second wave nobody wanted to go out on 14th of april 2021 we started on road and we we were on road for 98 days and we completed uh, almost 250 medical camp in 3 years and treated more than 1 lakh kids so i am doing that uh, 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 doctors on road and then my 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 dream is to uh, that uh, to make this right to health care a law so we are fighting for that uh, we have uh, made this proposal um, health for all uh, this is uh, just a brochure but it's a lengthy proposal uh, with the 55 health activist activist non political across the globe we have made this proposal <coughs> because one thing i have realized that brd oxygen strategy was uh, just a brutal face of our broken health system the same year when the brd there was 70 kids died the same year in all over india 8.2 lakh kids died in india which unicef says that these deaths were preventable it has been every hour 100 kids are dying 4.5 lakh people die because of tuberculosis when all over world tu tuberculosis is why not there actually every second female is anemic every second child is malnourished india has become diabetic capital of the world every third person who is suffering with hiv and aids is living in india india has spent it's not only modi government for the past 75 years india has spent only 1 to 1.5 percent on of gdp on health expenditure so we get got this data from the un uh, world bank unicef and we made this proposal uh, our demand is to at least spend 5% on gdp on health expenditure what we saw in april and may what i have talked about the allied class first time they thought that health can, health is some issue because for them Uh, whenever they want they can go to medanta or fortis and they can throw money and they can get bet for the first time they bear bore that bar hey but i tell you 75% of indian population this is the, uh, not just saying uh, 75% of indian population are are their primary health care is taken care of by un trained non medical profession like you will call it as a quacks but i won't call them because they are the backbone of our health system so 75% of indian population feel the same pain what april or may india has you know the, that that class had felt if somebody is having severe abdominal pain if some kid is having high grade fever if somebody get heart attack if some uh, somebody is going to deliver if somebody you know met with a accident where they will go the primary health center is closed they have to go to the uh, district hospital from there they will refer to the medical college by the time they reach the medical college they have to travel at least 100 to 200 kilometers so by the time they reach half of them die and those half who reached there they had to struggle to get bed to get medicine to get oxygen so that's the irony that even after 75 years our independence the 75% of indian population are bearing the that pain and i'll tell you uh, they are uh, one way they are also responsible for that because it's one thing that political will is not there to give your basic roti kapda makan and health education employment but when you go vote you also vote on the basis of caste and religion see up election is there and you know and for 5 years yogi adityanath has done nothing nothing i will tell you for 5 years he has just spread 
the no hated among people on the name of caste and religion and talk about Sabsan, Kabristan, Ali, Bajran, Bali and now who has come with, with that, that UP election is on the basis of only two issues Jinnah and uh, nationalism, the pseudo-nationalism I call it. So, so when you go vote, you don't vote on the issue of <coughs> unemployment, education, health. So I appeal to everyone to when you go vote, you know, you should vote on your issues. Don't vote for the party. Whichever candidate can give your constituency, school, hospital, your job, vote for them, please. Because, you know, the, the hatred is so much now, you know, uh, the youngster, especially the 16 year, 18 year, 20 year old, those who are, uh, you know, addicted to Reels and TikTok and all those, um, they're spending on mobile phone, the misinformation. Now these kids, when we were at that age, we were, we were uh, busy playing outdoor cricket or outdoor games. Now these kids are getting high after seeing somebody get killed. See, mob lynching is an organized crime. A mob is trained to kill someone. Otherwise, a murderer who is committing a crime is not going to take a photo or video and put it on social media because he knew that somebody in, De in Delhi, his, his boss is going to save himself. So, so this is happening and, and, and you know, I, I, Goa is one place where that hatred has not yet come. But uh, the, just adjacent to Goa is the Karwar and the um, Mangalore and this coastal Karnataka has become very... Uh, Doctor, if, yes. if I could uh, just conclude, uh, thank yes, you so yes. much for bringing us to this point, emphasizing the importance of healthcare particularly. Uh, you know, and the role of the citizen in keeping it at the back of their mind when they are taking decisions. Uh, your story has many strands to it. One of the strands is about human rights violations and uh, astounding kind of uh, revelations you have made in your book. Uh, the other strands, of course, are, are you know, about uh, just the carelessness of uh, people in power. I'm not talking about any particular party, but generally it, as a trend which we've been living with. Uh, of course, uh, you know, even even uh, what I find very positive and optimistic is that there are people who are willing to stand out, stick out and they can pay the price to dream of a better tomorrow. And uh, I would like to conclude on one note, in the 80s when we were young, there were groups like Medico Friend Circle in Mumbai, Bombay, who were actually, who were doing work on health as an issue. And uh, you know, we who are in the media or on the periphery of the media also have this feeling that we don't see health as a sexy story. It's very difficult to put uh, put this story in between uh, one set of covers or in, in a newspaper and a 24-hour news cycle and all that. But you have done it. We are we are grateful to you. Uh, with this, we'll wind up the program because some have to uh, have to go some distance. Travel safely. Uh, please uh, have a look at the book. Buy the book. Uh, autograph copies are available only today. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was lovely. Day. Thank you, thank you much. Thank you. And of course, I really like your writing. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> Hindu said to say hello to you. Ah. She is in a village. Your name is ma'am? Ritu Divan. Ritu Ritu Divan. Yeah. My, my wife used to work for Hindu. Ages back, before we got married, yeah, yeah. she was uh, she was working yeah. on the lawyers collective, Pamela De Mello, yeah, but so, yeah, yeah, on the magazine, magazine yeah. with Satyajit and all that, no? We bring out that on yeah, the yeah, 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 no, no, this is lawyers collective, no, from the lawyers collective, yeah, 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 correct, 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 correct. in those years, yeah, when Sanubar and all were there also, I think, yeah, 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 yeah. Hello. Hello. Nice uh, meeting. Once nice you have finished the book, there is an email okay. uh, yeah. in this. I uh, didn't bring my email. Email me your views. And your writing. Because, uh, no, no. That's the uh, best thing uh, no, uh, for a writer. If uh, somebody, a uh, reader, yeah, yeah. appreciate that. Thank you.